Hello, my name is Richard Capone. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Let's Go Learn. And today I'm going to be giving you a brief overview and demo of Atom, which is our adaptive diagnostic assessment of mathematics. First of all, our entire platform is a data-driven personalized learning platform. We have granular diagnostic assessment in math and reading, and that data drives down to a personalized learning engine, which could be used for reports, could be used for automated courses, it could be used for PLCs or for grouping of students. But Adam is sort of our uh, flagship math assessment that focuses on K7 to K8 level, right? And this is really important because this is the area where a lot of students get gaps. So it's really important that this area of foundational mathematics is very accurate. So also in the greater uh, scheme of the school district, we work within all departments, whether it's general ed, intervention, or special education, the same Adam assessment can be used, but what really varies is the reports. So a general ed may be using the screening, the summary reports. They may be using the assessments more for um, benchmarking, knowing whether students are on grade level or not, where intervention is gonna be used in more detailed diagnostic reports, where they wanna know exactly what do I need to do to help the student identify the, all the gaps. And special education is gonna do the same thing. They wanna know about the gaps, but they're also going to be using the Adam reports to help write um, IEPs and help set goals and so on and so forth. So it does work. The same data works across many departments for all students or for students with high needs. OK. All right. Uh, what is the secret sauce? How does Adam work? Why is it uh, different? Well, it is built on a diagnostic model of assessment. This is really, really interesting. And it's hard because the word diagnostic, unfortunately, is used too loosely, right? So an assessment that is a, a standard like fourth grade a benchmark test, it's really testing students just across math at fourth grade. Maybe they go down a little bit to third grade. And then likewise, if you do a sixth grade assessment, a benchmark test, it's really looking at just the math that covers those areas. A diagnostic model says, I don't care what grade the student in, is in. If they're an eighth grader, a second grader, a third grader, it'll adapt up and down to find their instructional point regardless of the grade level. Now, if we look at Adam, Adam is broken up into 44 subtests, right? So I'm not showing all the subtests on the screen, but within each one of those subtests, it's built on a scope and sequences of skills and concepts that stack. So when it adapts up and down, it finds these instructional points along this line regardless of the student's grade, right? So this is really key. So if we take a look at place value, let's look at this one bar, we're gonna drill down into it. We break and define place value as these sets of skills, ones and tens, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, expanded form, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, and then decimal place value. That is how you teach place value. You first start teaching students ones and tens, and then you start moving up these skills and they all stack. Adam finds exactly where the student is at, having tested a student in a set of items, so we know they've mastered it. Now the, the set of skills right above that, they got a set of items and they had a non-mastery. So definitively, I know the student's instructional point is right where this X is at, and there is no question about it. We did not guess or, or make an inference based on another subtest, right? A lot of times you'll see assessments that'll say, Richard is developmentally ready to work on uh, dividing numbers without remainders. Okay, developmentally ready means they don't know. They didn't actually test it, but they're guessing through statistics. That's not what a diagnostic assessment does. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, in terms of Adam specifications, it covers foundational math from grades K to seven slash eight, right? And it also it covers all of the major math strands, numbers and operations, measurement, data analysis, geometry, and algebraic thinking. Um, the adaptive logic, of course, while we say we cover all these areas of math, it adapts up and down the full gamut for each student as needed. So um, if the student's older, you know, it may start a certain level, it'll adjust down if it needs to, it'll adjust up. Likewise, if the student's younger, it'll go up as far as we as a, as a student can go. Um, if they're an advanced student, likewise, if someone is struggling in math, it'll go down. So it's pretty amazing and the logic's very, very sophisticated. Next, the student interface also adjusts to the student's grade level. So older students will have a more mature interface where younger students will have a little bit more elementary interface. As far as the assessment, the assessment can be start and stopped at any moment. It can be broken up into multiple sessions. 
Now there's also audio support for all text. Because reading could be a confound, we want to really test whether the student knows the math concept or not. If there's a paragraph, it will be read to the student. If there's text in the choices, it will be read to the student as well. The assessment is available in Spanish and English. All right, let's go ahead and jump into a demo. So right now I'm in a class. And I'm going to go ahead and go to take a look at the math score. So the idea is that we have a class. They finished taking the assessment. Now, initially, when I look at this, I see a lot of scores. These are grade level scores, and it tells you exactly where they're at. So a total score says the students around end of fourth grade, 4.9. 4.15 is beginning of fourth grade, and you see these different scores. We also see the breakout scores for the different strands, numbers, measurements, data, geometry, algebra. These may look very similar because a lot of other assessments may have scores that look similar to this, but this is just the beginning, right? These scores are summative, so but the teacher is going to want more detailed data. So what they would do is maybe go into the individual subtests. So I would say, let's take a look at the numbers and operations, and we see that numbers and operations is actually broken up into 14 subtests. Numbers, place value, ordering, addition, subtraction, multiplication, right? So this is where it really starts getting met meaty because each of these scores is tied to a specific skill or concept. So if I want to look at this class here, let's say I want to drill down to place value. I'm going to select place value right here and say instructional placement, click. Now, this is the scope and sequence of teaching place value. The vast majority of the students have mastered all of place value. This is a seventh grade class after all. We have one student who's working on thousands, ten thousands, and then we have a bunch of students, uh, looks like maybe eight or nine, who are working on decimal place value. And that's really interesting because that's a very discrete skill. We now know we need to focus with those students, uh, and we now know that's exactly what they need to be working on, right? And that tells us once they master this, they'll have a 5.9 score, which is the max score in place value, right? Now, I can do that for everything. That's what's really amazing about Adam. So whether I'm working on numbers and operations or I want to go into measurement, maybe I want to work on length or weight or capacity, I can see there's a wide, broad range of students' understandings. So this is one way of looking at the data. Now, on a very, very basic level, if I want to just look at one of the students, let's say uh, Cami, I could go ahead and say, let me just look at their summary report. So here's a summary report, and we see exactly for Cami where she is at um, in each of these areas within numbers and operations. It says Cami can identify the correct use of comma in four digit and larger numbers. Great. That is exactly where that student has mastered in terms of the highest point. And we see the proximal grade level. And then we see also what the maximum score is. The red arrows tells us where the student is below grade level. And so maybe that's an area of focus that we want to focus on. Right. So we can scroll down and we see here's all the different areas of, of uh, foundational mathematics. Now, if I close this and I take a look at a different report, let's take a look at the detailed report for Cami. This is interesting because this report actually gives us a little bit more detailed. So it actually breaks out and shows up the whole scope and sequence for each student. So looking at place value, it's very interesting. It's pretty simple. Double arrow means the student's below grade level. We need to work on decimal place value. The green shows us where she is at. Cami has mastered thousands, ten thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions place value. And now Cami will identify the va uh, place value of decimals. So that's the instructional point. This report is like 15 pages long. It just, you know, it varies because it's, it's really going into detail. This is a great report to give to a tutor, to give to a parent, um, even to the student if they're older, because it exactly spells out what they need to work on by going through all these different areas. And obviously you'd prioritize the double arrows. Okay, let's go back over here. So now the other part about Adam, which is pretty interesting, is that you can take this data and we could do something we call a standards report. And what's great about this is if I know that I'm working on a specific area, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a standards report. So I can come over here, I could select a standard. So let's say I know I want to work on something within capacity or measurement. Okay, so here we go. I went ahead and, and selected one. And what's interesting is this particular standard deals with angles. And it shows us the students who are not ready to learn it. These are students who need foundational skills, need building. And we see that these students need to understand more about circles and uh, displaying data. So these are two foundational skill areas that the student needs to work on. There's no one ready to learn, and these students have mastered the standard. So I have a little bit of a gap. So if we know that we're supposed to be working on this, I could focus on 
trying to teach these students. It looks to me like these students are at the very, very beginnings of circles, probably assign something to them or do a little scaffolding and, and bringing them up to speed. So this is the kind of detail that Adam allows you to do. It allows you to take any of the standards and break out the foundational skills that make up the standards. So this is an important part of the data. All right, another report we have as well that's very, very powerful for Adam. Before I mention special education when you're writing IEPs or just interventions when you're trying to do goal setting. So these two reports will allow you to sort of break apart that detailed report I showed you. Remember I showed you that 15 page detailed report? Well, maybe you don't wanna print that out. So you may say, look, I just wanna mine the data a little bit. In this particular uh, student, I really wanna look at numbers and operations and I wanna just say, what are the next skills I need to work on? Next three skills within each of the areas. I could hit refresh. And this is something you could use from an intervention standpoint or for setting goals for somebody with an IEP. So I would then sort of choose these areas, say what are the lowest areas to focus on? So it looks like fractions is, was one of the lowest areas. Um, yeah, that's probably it, fractions. So I would say, okay, we need to work to Maia will compare fractions, will order fractions, and will identify decimal equivalent of fractions. So those are the next three skills within fractions I need to work on in that order. So I definitely know what to work on. This report allowed me very quickly sort of drill down into those areas by knowing where I want to focus as opposed to necessarily having that big, long 15-page report. All right. So it's pretty easy. But of course, I'm showing you a lot of reports. There's a lot of data. But the great thing about all of this is you will get the training to how to use this data. And then also there are reports where you can use this at a site level. So imagine taking this detailed data and breaking it down at a grade level. It helps you identify curricular gaps. It helps you understand what kind of prioritizations you need to do um, by grade level. So it's really, really powerful. The final thing I wanna show you before wrapping this up is just even the progress monitoring. So we showed you how you have all these different sets of scores. You could progress monitoring as students take multiple assessments. So I could go ahead and click on progress monitoring. I could say I want to look at the past five years or just depending on how much data the student has. And so I could go ahead and just sort of, you know, I just could click through here and just uh, click on these three right here, maybe this last one, and then say chart. So now I see the student's data uh, based on these past few years by strand. Now I could also even break it out by the individual sub by the individual subtest within the strand. So if I want to look at numbers and operations, I could do that. And then I could go ahead and select those individual areas. Chart. Now those are the ones we were showing you earlier. Place value, comparing and ordering, addition of whole numbers, subtraction. All of that we can see is very specifically where the student is at and how they've been progressing. So it's quite powerful. Um, a lot of these reports are all automatic. We, we, you know, the teacher just has to queue up a quiz and then it updates all of the scores for progress monitoring. All right, let me go ahead and wrap it up. So in summary, Adam, it's a part of a larger system. You do the diagnostic assessment. You could use the data to either do small group instruction, develop your intervention plans. You could use it for IEPs. There's an automated course that's automatically generated. We have lessons tied to our system, or it could be something that you do as a teacher. And then of course, there's progress monitoring. You could do quizzes or individual subtests. That data lays back on top of the baseline data, giving you really, really easy uh, progress monitoring. And then of course, we do lots of professional development through every step of the way. And that's how we're um, going to help ensure that you have high fidelity when you implement Atom. All right, any questions, you could go ahead and go to our website. You can click on talk to an expert and you'll meet with one of our educational consultants. Um, we're looking forward to possibly working with you in the future if we're not already. Thank you very much.